Welcome to another edition of That Time When. We're now in 4K. On this episode, that time when Lee Sargent and I dived into the next generation over three parts back in 2019. Well, welcome to the show. It's been four months since I spoke to uh, this guest, <laughs> today's guest. Uh, Lee Sargent is back with me. We're talking track. Lee, welcome back to Track Zone. Yeah, thank you for having me again for, after so long. Um, we were going to do this regularly, but life happens. <laughs> life does happen. Uh, having said that, though, I, I, we recorded at the start of January, uh, but mm. I did hold off and, and release the episodes sporadically. So I think for folks playing along at home, it hasn't been as long. Uh, in fact, I think we spoke about the animated series uh, yes. in April. Uh, that yep. one was released in April, so that's pretty that's good. Right. But today we're talking about The Next Generation, the first live-action spin-off series uh, of our beloved franchise. Uh, what are your recollections, your memories of, of this uh, series, Lee? Uh, well, I remember, uh, I remember certainly when it came out, because uh, it came out probably a couple of years after obviously in the U S here in Australia. And I certainly remember the first season. I remember, uh, the figurines in the shops, um, which are, which I, which I, cause I remember them being in a big discount bin, funny enough. <laughs> um, and, and being excited to see this discount bin with Star Trek written on the side and, and kind of running over and grabbing kind of a whole handful of these, these tiny figurines and going, hang on a second. Who are these people? <laughs> um, because I'm pretty certain they released the toys here in Australia before they actually released the show, um, which would have been confusing, I suspect, for some, um, because there was no kind of, you know, obviously they didn't they didn't look the same, and there was no kind of idea of what was going on. There was no internet back then, so obviously we we only had kind of what was showing up in magazines. And I was probably too young to afford Starlog magazine because um, as soon as you import a magazine into Australia triples its price and uh <laughs> the so joys of being was, australian yeah that's it well back then anyway now it's not so bad but back then it was like uh yeah you'd wait a couple of years for tv shows and and anything kind of imported into the news agency would be expensive uh so i remember it kind of coming on tv and i remember kind of um i remember some of the i, I remember a feeling of disappointment uh because i didn't like the new enterprise uh and i and I was kind of like, yeah, but what about kind of the, the Star Trek that I know and love? And being very young at the time too, uh, didn't kind of, it wasn't a very well-formed uh, vibe of kind of dealing with this new show. But, I mean, the thing is, it's like with, with anything, you kind of start watching it and, and it was a very kind of reassuring show and and uh, grew to love it. It wasn't until though, in fairness, and I will kind of out myself here it wasn't until generations that i actually fell in love with the enterprise d fell in love with the enterprise d wow by then it was interesting <laughs> well I, th I think in generations i kind of saw it shot so well um that i kind of wrapped my head around how it moved properly and stuff like that because we we saw the the enterprise d kind of move a fair bit in generations and it was shot beautifully um despite kind of whatever anyone might think of the show, the movie itself. So yeah, it wasn't until then that I kind of really kind of went, you yeah, know, I like the enterprise D and then they crashed it and I went, oh, okay, well that's, <laughs> that's bad timing. Uh, but yeah, I like and, uh, next generation was always a, it was, it was always a kind of, it was a mainstay obviously of my teenage years. So um, whilst I was, uh, I will always be an original Star Trek kind of first, Next Generation was, it stood perfectly on its own. Well, it was originally pitched to the then fledgling Fox Network in the 19, in 1985 and 86. That's right, yeah. Um, but they couldn't guarantee uh, a, an episode order greater than 13 episodes, which probably defeats the purpose of creating all the sets and spending the millions of dollars to start up a series. Um, and then Mel, Mel... The irony now is, of course, most series any most good quality series are um 13 episodes now so <laughs> exactly it's yeah it's a bit of synergy that we've come back to yeah i think so are you watching us on youtube click the link in the description to catch this interview in full now maybe you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app then beam over to our official watch page and click the link there 
Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favourite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trekzone and subscribe.